Hi there, my name's Ethan. I'm a brand ambassador for Discount Tackle, and today I'm gonna to share with you three tips to catch more bedding bass. Now, I personally live up in Michigan, and the bass up here, they spawn in the early to mid-May time frame, but depending on where you're at and what the water temperatures are, the bass could either spawn earlier or later. That being said, these tips will apply no matter where you're at. Now, before I get into the tips, I obviously want to share the fact that you are fishing for reproducing fish. Ultimately, just make sure to take care of these fish. Make sure not to hold them out of the water too long, because at the end of the day, they're reproducing and creating future generations of fish, so please, just take care of them. Now, the first tip that I have for you is actually to stay stealthy healthy when fishing. What I mean by that is you're going to see these bass up in the shallows and they're going to be up next to a stump or next to a dock or whatever, but you're going to be able to get pretty close to them. But the reality is once you can see them, they can probably see you too. When they see you, it's not that they won't bite, but they definitely become a little bit more aware of what's going on and they're probably a little bit less prone to biting. So essentially wearing a good pair of sunglasses and a hat and the keeping your distance is absolutely one of my top tips to being able to catch more bedding fish. My second tip is really simple bait rotation. I've got three rods with me today. I'm going to try to catch a bedding bass here in a second. But the big thing when it comes to bedding fish is giving them a couple different looks because sometimes it takes three or four or five different baits before you can actually make them bite. Now the last tip I have for you is aggravate the bass. You have to remember that these fish are looking to spawn. They are not necessarily looking to feed. So ultimately to make them bite, you really have to make them mad. I'm going to show you that right now because I've got a couple bedding fish over here and I am going to go rotate these baits. I'm going to stay stealthy and we're going to try to catch them. So let's get started. So this bank right here, I've seen lots of bedding bass on and I've actually got one right in front of me. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this fish right here. Like I said, in tip number two, bait rotation is absolutely key. I've got three rods with me today. Obviously when you're bank fishing, you might only want to carry one or two, but when you're in a boat, you might have seven or eight on your deck. I'm going to go ahead and start with something that I really, really like, and that is a white plastic. Now I'm actually doing a little bit of experimenting and I'm using a Tokyo rig, which I don't traditionally use. That being said, stand up jigs, Texas rigs, drop shots, they're all good options. But why I choose white is because I can simply see it. Like I mentioned, these bass aren't necessarily feeding. So ultimately you just have to aggravate them enough. And then having a white bait allows you to see that. And it allows you to see when the fish take it down. So I'm going to go ahead and make a pitch, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cast past the bed and then I'm going to reel it up to the bed. Okay. So I've got my bass. They're kind of moseying on and off the bed right now but I'm gonna kind of work this bait up to the bed and see how the bass reacts. So I've currently got the Tokyo rig sitting right on the bed and the bass is currently not on the bed. So this fish might not be catchable. We'll see how it reacts. Okay, it's starting to sneak back up and it's trying to take a look at what's going on. So that's a good sign. After you fish for spawning bass enough, you start to realize their temperament. When fish leave the bed, that's usually a bad sign because that means that they're not necessarily locked. But when they come back to their bed and look at your bait, that's obviously a good sign that they're locked and uh, they're not exactly happy with something being on the bed. I'm to the point now where this bass obviously knows something's up. He's not super pumped about the fact that this is coming on and off the bed, but he doesn't seem to be that mad about it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is use my my second tip and do some bait rotation. Now this bait as it is right now, I don't like for bed fishing because it's got too long of tentacles. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually gonna rip those off because I don't like really, really long baits for bed fishing. I tend to like compact baits because like I've mentioned several times, these fish aren't necessarily looking to eat. Sometimes they're just gonna grab something and move it off their bed. And so having a long profile bait, a lot of times gives those fish a chance not to eat it. They'll just kind of grab the tail and move it. I want something nice and compact to where when they pick it up and try to move it, they pretty much get every bit of that bait. The other thing is this is really like a bluegill color. And so when I'm not using a white or a high visibility plastic, I like to rotate in some bluegill colors because this time of year, bluegill are often notorious for coming in and trying to eat those bass's eggs. And so using something that looks like a bluegill can really make those bass mad. I would definitely not consider this bass fully locked yet, but I do think it's catchable. Just a matter of how long I want to spend on it. And like I said, there's several other bass down this bank too. So if I decide this bass isn't worth my time, I might just keep moving. And you know what? That's actually a tip I should bring up too, is when it comes to bed fishing, they're all very different. I've spent 30 seconds trying to catch a fish and I caught it on my first or second flip. And I've spent an hour on a fish before I caught it. So you have to really have patience. I'm sure this fish is catchable, but he seems like a fish that I would need to spend uh, probably 30, 40 minutes on. So what I'm gonna do for the sake of time is just keep moving. Okay, we moved to another fish. Hopefully this one's a little more active. He seems like he's very much locked. 
he's not moving around near as much as that last fish. So I'm just gonna kind of shake it in place here. Oh, he is really close to it. And this is where bait rotation is probably gonna be key. Because if he looks at this bait about 10 times and really gets a good look at it, sometimes all it takes is just making a quick change to a different color and that'll make them react. So I'm gonna make a couple more flips with this. If we don't get them on this, I'll switch to that little crawfish plastic. I'm gonna try downsizing and using the drop shot. This is definitely one of the uh, most popular rigs for bed fishing. He just flared his gills at it on the last pitch, so that's a really good sign. What's he gonna do? Oh, he's got it. No! Oh, he just bit the tail and I set the hook like an idiot. That was bad on my part, but it's a good sign. I guess I better take my own advice and do some more bait rotation. I thought the drop shot was the ticket. Back to the first bait. Oh, he just nipped it. He opened his mouth, literally nipped it and dropped it right away. Oh, got him. Oh my gosh. The amount of patience I had. No, I don't know how I didn't hook him uh, hard enough, but I tell you what, had him right on the outside of the mouth. And apparently I did not rig this quite properly because you can see that hook didn't even come out. And I'm not gonna keep fishing for that fish. He would probably honestly bite again because he's a betting bass. But I think you kind of get the point there. I really wish I would have caught him. I'm gonna go bounce to another one, just see if I've got five minutes. Maybe I can make one bite quick, but unfortunately I just obviously did not rig this plastic quite right because that didn't go through the plastic like at all. It's still practically weedless. Kind of disappointing. I've never actually used the Tokyo rig, like I said. So maybe I need to uh, expose it a little bit more. First cast. That one came and grabbed it first, literally first cast of that bed. Oh my gosh. Some fish you have to work for literally like 30 minutes. Other fish, it takes one cast. Let's throw it right back in the water, let it go home, let it go protect its bed. Okay, hopefully those two bass showed you that not only can bed fishing be challenging and frustrating, but it can also be a lot of fun. Follow those three simple tips and you will definitely catch some fish off beds too. It's so funny how one can take 45 minutes and the next one can be literally one cast. Crazy how that works, but I tell you what, that's just the name of the game. Thanks so much for watching. You can find all the products used in today's video on discounttackle.com. We'll catch you next time.